Okay, so the site has been brought back to life, and uh, we've redeployed it, or you know, unarchived it, resurrected it, whatever you want to call it, and now we're ready to continue with what we want to learn today. Question. Your website's saying the welcome to Yummy. Yeah. My website just go local host uh, WordPress. Is that you're gonna be on the same page? You mean local host WordPress? Yeah. I don't have this last welcome to Yummy. I clicked on a link. I clicked on a link, so don't worry about it. Um, yours looks like this, right? Oh, okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this current um, theme is um, this canyon theme, which might be a little too powerful than what we need at this point. So what I'm going to do is talk a moment about changing themes again, and and we'll, we'll choose one of the basic but powerful themes, and then we'll do other things that I want to talk about. So, if you're looking at the dashboard like this, you want to go, I'm sorry, if you're looking at the front end like this, you want to go back to the dashboard. Click dashboard. Let's hover over appearance and select themes. So under themes, we have then the listing that I currently have the Canyon theme active, and we've got these other ones. For the moment, let's switch it back to the 2015 theme, just the basic theme. Remember to switch between themes, you hover over a theme and click Activate. So activate the 2015 theme, and if we look at Visit Site, same content, different design, and um, that's the one of the really cool things about WordPress that your content will stay the same, but you can change your design and other things very easily. The 2015. What's that? 2015. 2015 theme. Yes. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Let's talk about one of the things that I mentioned previously, which was, well, at the moment our home page is going to show the latest blog post. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe on the home page actually what I want is like a static welcome screen. Right now when I add a brand new blog post it will replace the last thing. So I want a static front page. That requires a little bit of setup first. So click on the pages link on the left side, pages, So mine says about us, all about our amazing shop, sample page. What I want to do is we're going to create two sort of placeholder pages. One page will be the home page, one will be the blog page. We'll see why that matters in a moment. So at the top, add new, or on the left, click add new. We're adding a new page. The title, let's call this first blog, simply blog. Click blog and then click inside of the editing area down here. And you should see that our permalink becomes localhost slash wordpress slash blog. That's from our permalink structure we set up a little earlier today. Normally it might have said something like localhost slash wordpress slash 15748. That's much better for your SEO. The search engines will will be able to read your page titles, your address, your URLs, and rank you better if they make sense. Is that, Definitely, because the a name like one five eight seven two is worthless for SEO. We are currently talking about only the blog stuff on my site, so this makes sense. For your whole site, that's a different screen. So this is going to be a placeholder to display all of the blogs on my site, because at the moment they are automatically being displayed on the home page. Welcome to Yummy, if you don't remember, was our very first blog post. Previously, there was one called Hello World. 
So the blogs are appearing on the home page. I don't want that. I want the, uh, the blogs to appear on a menu item here called blog. So I want to move all my blog posts to a blog screen. That's what this is here. This placeholder is a screen to show our blogs. So we, don't, we actually don't have to write anything here, but let's just write the blog. This is a placeholder, so it doesn't matter what we write here. But we'll just write something. We don't need to change anything else. Just click Publish. Let's click to add another page. To add new here or add new there. And also up at the top, did you notice we have a new? We also can quickly go to new post, media, page, or user. So many ways to do the same thing. We go ahead and add a new page. The title here, let's call it home. And on the editing area, we'll, we'll just say something like, welcome to our site. We hope you enjoy, blah, blah, blah. Just write something and then publish it. So this is another placeholder. We have a page called blog. All of our blogs will, will then be shown on that page. We have then a page called home. And yes, later on we will craft a better message on our home page. I just want to publish something. So make sure um, you've given it a title and a little text and then click publish. This home page will not automatically become the home page just because we called it home. We need to we need to force that by going to settings menu reading. Let's go to settings and then reading. Settings reading. Front page displays. Sometimes the wording of these things is odd. I would have called this, what would you like your front page to display? Would you like it to display your latest posts or a static page? A static page. Static page. So activate a static page and then it says, okay, choose your front page template and choose your posts page template. So front page will be home and posts will be blog. So we could not do this previously. I did mention the screen, if you recall, but we couldn't fully set it up because we didn't have a home page placeholder and we didn't have a blog page placeholder. So let's go ahead and set this and then scroll down to save. Save changes. And now visit site. Do you see a difference? If you visit site, there's the home message. Welcome to our site. I don't see the home page. Why don't I see the blog page? Why doesn't it show up automatically in my menu? Menus. We have to edit the menu. We have to add it to the menu. It doesn't. A page doesn't automatically get added to a menu. You think that you might think that's inconvenient. Well, I'll show you a, a button where we can change that. But I said last time, I don't recommend that every new page automatically gets added to your menu. Because later on, as we talk about the concept of landing pages and such, we don't want a landing page on our menu. In short, a landing page is sort of like a hidden secret page. The only way you can get to that page, let's say, is from the email you sent out. Let's say I have a, a list of, I have an email list. I send out an email advertisement to those special 20 people. Follow this link for 20% off. It's going to be a page on your site. Therefore, we don't want that hidden 20% off link right on the menu here. We want them to follow the link and land on it. Again, that's a little advanced. We'll get to it more on the advanced class. For us right now, well, let's add the blog page to our menu. 
A shortcut here is if you hover over the name of your site, you can go directly to menus. If you don't see it up there, you can always get back to it with appearance menus. I currently have a home link, which I don't like the name of it, and then a sub item, and then all about our amazing shop. And what's missing is the blog page. So on the left side, you want to select blog, add to menu, and now it's on our menu. So click the blog check mark, add to menu. I already have the home. We did home previously. I don't remember putting four question marks on it, but I guess I did. But yeah, we added home previously. I remember adding this little arrow on Amazon. I've got blog. And this is what I was saying earlier. Add, auto add pages. If we had that on, we would not have to remember to keep adding items to our menu. But I think it's going to be more useful to you as an advanced user not to use that. Because when you create landing pages or other advanced pages on your site, we don't want those pages to be automatically added to your menu. Um, so the downside is that we have to manually remember to go back to our menu, add the item, and then save the menu. Go ahead and save the menu and then go to visit site. And now you should see your blog link on your menu at the left. So we're looking at the home page here. Here's our menu, blog. Click on blog and it's going to show our two blog posts. Welcome to Yummy and Hello World. You click on home and then it goes back home. Does it work for everyone? <laughs> I see this one. It's the same thing. Did you click here first and then add to menu? Okay, so that's, um, that's something that's always requested when people uh, come to my class. Uh, how do I set up a static home page? Because the default of WordPress is to have a blog home page. So we saw that we needed to know two things. We needed to create uh, a couple of template pages and then connect them inside of the settings. Remember that when we created the blog template page, we wrote the blog in, in the body. It doesn't appear anywhere because it's being replaced by, by our new blog posts. So let's say that we want to add another blog post because if you take the SEO class of mine, in there I talk about that it's important to blog. Just about any site would benefit from having a blog because the search engines will see that your site is being updated on a regular basis if you do blog, if you if you put your if it's a really nice website and you put it out there but you never update it, it might not be ranked very well by the search engines. So a little free SEO tip is you want to blog uh, on a regular basis, which I tell beginners a regular basis is once a month. You know, more advanced 
uh, lessons on blogging will tell you, make sure you blog every week. Well, if you're not used to blogging, one week, once a week is going to be a very high bar to reach. So to start off with, once a month. And if you still have more questions about blogging, I teach a class on blogging. So let's get practice again. Let's add a blog post from this screen here, from my screen right here. What would you say is the fastest way to create a brand new blog post? New post. Let's do that then. Let's add a new blog post. So let's say here we've got Victor's Bakery. Let's say we're going to add something new. Every month we're going to give away a free recipe. Maybe we've got a famous recipe that we're known for. We're not going to give away that recipe, but we're going to give away a version of a recipe. The point of that is to write content that would entice people to keep coming back. People are keep coming back, well that's improving your traffic. And it's kind of like a, the snake eating its own tail in that to get better SEO rankings, you need more traffic. Well, if you get more traffic, that gets you better SEO results. So they both go together. So here we're going to add a post recipe of the month. Key lime pie. If you click in the in the uh, editing area, do you notice the permalink then fills itself in? Recipe of the month, key lime pie. Well, here's another SEO trick or tip. This is good for people to read, but the address here might be a little too long for SEO. Let's click on edit. And it says, okay, what would you like? I'm going to change this to key lime pie recipe. And do you notice no spaces, no capitalization, no symbols? It's all lowercase. We can use numbers if we want. But here, I'm writing the address instead, key lime pie recipe. That, I think, would be something that people would search for more. People might not be really searching for recipe of the month, but they might be searching for key lime pie recipe. So that's what my title is going to target because I'm thinking in terms of what people are searching for. The permalink, when you upload it, it will make it live. Mm -hmm. And all that, what, whatever's before the key lime, is going to be replaced by the, by the server. The website. That's right. So this stuff, instead of localhost, it'll have interstate.com. And uh, probably, yeah, so all of this will be victors.com and then that's going to be the, the same. Thank you. Question. Uh, there would, but the big idea is that you definitely don't want default. Now, between dates and just the post, uh, I don't believe there's a lot of difference because even though that these don't have a date, coupled with the concept of a sitemap, which we might not really have time to get into this class, that's the SEO class, but if we've got a sitemap, basically your sitemap is informing the search engines every time something's updated. So if we have dates, it helps. If we have full names, it helps. If we have default numbers, that doesn't help. Okay, so we won't stress too much about writing anything here, but uh, <clears throat> we've talked about posts a little bit before. Uh, again, uh, what I would say, very condensed concept of SEO. Uh, you want to write content, you want to write blog posts once a month, and I would say a target of 100 words at least. So here it's telling us we have no words, of course. But as we start writing, we'll see it'll, it'll add up. And you think 100 words, well, you're going to get to 100 words relatively quickly. And 100 words once a month is a very good goal for a beginner in, in blogging. 
later on when you get more advanced, you're going to be doing once a week, maybe 200 words. But then that's got its own set of uh, uh, pros and cons. But that's for the other classes to talk about, really. Question? Uh, length of the blog how many words? The ideal length of the blog? Uh, 100 words is a good, is a good starting point. But uh, the more you do, the better, because then uh, you have more that can be found by the search engines. And, and that's basically also, you, you can go to new and, and just post a, a new photo for the month. A photo is nice, but it's not going to help you as much as words, because the search engines, even the smartest computers, cannot tell what's that picture. Maybe it can tell it's a person. Maybe it can tell it's George Washington. But it's not going to be able to tell that that's Uncle Eddie holding our famous key lime pie. So if you write, if you write an article with the photo, as close to 100 words as you can, the better. Then the search engines will see that and be able to rank you better. I mean, since you brought up the pictures with the and then you can have the image, you know, when you search the image, uh -huh. if you're looking for a picture of someone, a picture of something, or even a comment, or let's, I mean, let's stick with the pictures. And then, you know, for example, you can be looking for a picture of, I think, of, uh, a bike, a bike, mm -hmm. and then, you know, just, so many different kinds of stuff. And then, I mean, how do you use that again? Well, if the question is how does the search engines find a particular picture, well it's the totality of it. It's not just the picture. The picture itself could have a file name and in the file name it's got those keywords. You can have alt text on the picture and that explains what the picture is. You can have text right below the picture that explains what it is. So it's not just the picture, it's totally what's the title, what's the text below the picture, what's the text near the picture, what's the text of the file name of the picture. So okay, it's, SEO always have to look for the words. Pretty much. It. Yeah. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future as the search engines get smarter and scarier and they can understand more, then maybe they'll be able, able to understand exactly what's in that picture. But that's why for the moment, for this foreseeable future, we really have to focus on text. So would you have too many, like, uh, your block is too large? Yeah, computer? that's the other side of it too. Maybe you have too much. Maybe you're using too many keywords artificially let's say. I'm not saying content. You can have lots of content, that's great. But if you keep using over and over and over, key lime pie, free key lime pie, key lime pie recipe, over and over like that, that's going to sound artificial and the search engines will not like that. Yes? Can we add a media blog? You can. Uh, we have add media, which lets you choose a picture, but also um, under add media we have insert from URL, so so you can, up, notice this is upload files. You could upload a picture, a sound, a video. I would recommend, however, if you're going to add videos, upload your videos to, for example, YouTube or Vimeo, some other video site, and let those sites hold and store your video because you're going to have space on GoDaddy, and if you add lots and lots of video, it's going to start running out. They're going to ask you to pay more. YouTube you're not going to run out of space. They're not going to ask you to pay for more space. So if you upload all your videos to YouTube, and they've got fast computers, fast servers, so just upload your videos to YouTube or Vimeo, and then you can link your video from YouTube into your blog post and let YouTube take care of all of the transferring and downloading. And you're saving space on your own server. Just one, uh, just a moment, question? If you're, say, for example, another competitor, if you're charging money for information, mm -hmm. and and some you know, some of that information is precisely in videos, mm -hmm. can you? Is there a way to do that through YouTube and Vimeo instead of having those videos on your on your Google's account? On YouTube, we have the ability to have a public video, an unlisted video, and a private video. Uh, public is that everyone can see it. Unlisted is that it's live, but people can only access it if they have the link. 
and then private is no one can see it unless they've been approved to see it. So that might be a way to gain money from that. Have your videos set to private and go through the process of setting up access, paying for access. It's not as uh, it's not exactly set up at the moment for people to really make money that way, but there are ways to kind of make it work. Question over here? Well, uh, yeah, I was just saying, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm getting back to what I heard. Um, you're, you're suggesting that rather than taking up space on your website or blog uh, with content like photos and, or, well, in this case, video, you mm -hmm. only supply your URL link, is that correct? Well, YouTube will give you sort of a little bit of easy copy and paste code to show the video directly here. It's not just going to be the URL, it's going to be a little, a little video embedded. So yeah, just put it on YouTube insert the, the code that it gives you and then your video will show up in a little thumbnail and they press play and everything. So it shoots it down to a, a, a little smaller font mm -hmm. uh, rather than a large Yeah, content. you can choose the size of the thumbnail that you want, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then we're just going to create this blog post very simply and uh, hopefully you have some ideas, text, pictures, sound. But let me mention this. Um, you know, I would, I would put my photos directly. I would click Add Media and Upload Photos. That I would store on my server because the other places where you can upload video, uh, your, your pictures to usually add too much branding to your picture, their branding of their website. So I would say upload your pictures into your GoDaddy and they're not going to take up as much space as a video. Video though, I would suggest you put them up on YouTube and they add the, it adds the basic YouTube icon in the corner like everyone's video does, but I think that far over outweighs the, everything else because you have unlimited space basically on YouTube and they have fast computers and um, servers. I mean, in that case, they, then, then they, uh, you cannot watch your uh, YouTube video on, on your site. Yeah, no, it is being, you, you will see it. Well, you, you see the link. But no, it's like not the link. Not the link. Like I said a moment ago, you will get the thumbnail right there on your post. You will be able to see it. People will see it right on your post. But I mean, can. can you really actually watch the thing on your site or you have to? Click the link and then it will take you to YouTube to watch the video. You can literally watch your video right on your site. Okay. Another place that you can store your videos is at is if you haven't heard of this site, Vimeo.com. V I M E O, Vimeo. They're not as big as YouTube, but they're another good site for you to upload there. Uh, and in the best possible way, I would say that Vimeo is a little bit more snobbish than YouTube. Whereas on YouTube, anyone can upload any dumb, pic any dumb video of any dumb thing. Here, it's a little bit more of a community that is trying to upload more high-quality kinds of videos. So um, this has its own um, audience and such, and it's, it's all free. And there's this one, there is a paid version of it for you to get more features. And this is another place you can upload your videos there. You just copy the link and put it on your site and it plays on your site. Uh, but we've got YouTube and Vimeo and a bunch of others that you can also use, but those are some of the two big ones I can think of. Yes. YouTube is still the bigger one because it just has, uh, by some estimates, it's got like almost probably like a billion users or, or views. That's true, so it's got a lot of connection with Google search. Um, so that's a couple of places to store it, but if you want to choose only one, then YouTube might be the better one. Well, let's say you've got sound. You want to put maybe interviews on your site. Sound also takes up more space than text and graphics. Text is the smallest, then comes graphics, then comes sound, then comes video, because that's a mixture of everything. So what I would recommend if you want to put your sounds, again, save them up on this, SoundCloud. Put them on SoundCloud, and then that'll give you a link, 
and you put that link onto your site and your sound will play right on your site. And that's going to um, not use up your space on your site. It's going to use their server, their bandwidth, their transfer speeds and everything and it'll and, they've, and they're one of the more famous ones regarding sound. So that might be a good place. So are you saying that sound can be attached to a picture? Or a no, I'm just saying sound like an interview or a podcast or, oh. you know, recorded sound. Like music, for example, you can have music while your clouds are moving across the screen. No one likes that anymore. This, um, <laughs> that, that was cool a few years ago, but people don't like that anymore because let's say you're at work and you're supposed to be doing your work, and you visit someone's site, and suddenly music starts playing, and the boss hears it. So it's kind of passe to have music playing on your site nowadays. All that I'm saying here is, uh, like for example, I've got Victor's Bakery, and once a month I'm going to put in an audio interview of one of my chefs so that people can listen to it in their commute in the, in the car. So I can save the sound, the interview, here on SoundCloud and attach it to my site, and then uh, they can hear it from my site. We should start with something else. Um, is, isn't the Islamic uh, any of the bakery elements here? Sure. Because I was just thinking about a mariachi night with uh, a video tape of mariachis playing. Yeah. If, if the sound is uh, if the sound is not problematic with copyrights, sure. Uh, and then one more. Let's say uh, maybe you're maybe you want to display or you want to post something that has PowerPoint, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, again, PowerPoints could take up a lot of space because um, nowadays it's not just plain text in a PowerPoint. You can have text and animation and sound and video even in a PowerPoint. So there's another network up here where you can. Uh, and obviously YouTube is free, SoundCloud is free. Here's the third one for PowerPoints. Uh, you can go over to uh, slideshare.com. .net, actually. Slideshare.net. And they were recently bought by LinkedIn. So you, that means that they're important. So slideshare.net. This is where you can upload PowerPoint presentations. And just the same sort of concept with YouTube and SoundCloud. Upload your big old files here instead of taking up space on your own server. Let them take care of the server space and bandwidth. And all of these give you what's known as the embed code. They give you the code for you to copy and paste onto your site. And they also have video, right? The PowerPoint itself can have video. Yeah. They're pretty advanced nowadays. Even if you're not going to use SlideShare, I would recommend you check out SlideShare because people are sharing a bunch of presentations on a bunch of great topics for free. A workshop on unlocking creativity. Ten clever combos that will make your audience happy. A part of a reason of putting also your videos or your multimedia content on one of these networks is they have a sort of built-in social network aspect. So if I put my video on Vimeo or YouTube, and I've got it on my site, but people are also going to see it on YouTube. People are going to search how to bake key lime pie on YouTube, and they may find my video. So that's even more traffic back to my site. I could put in my recipe right here. I could make a five-slide PowerPoint presentation on how to bake a key lime pie, put it on SlideShare, and maybe even if people never see it on my site, there's hundreds of millions of people using SlideShare, and now even more that LinkedIn bought them. So I can find my recipe there, and I'm probably going to have a link back to my site. This is the whole concept of the social media, using social media as advertising to get a result. I use it all the time for clients or myself. I make a video uh, and I put it on YouTube and then I also advertise it on my blog, I advertise it on my Google Plus, I advertise it on my Twitter and that's how you get traffic. It doesn't just, you don't just put it out there to the world and, so, and then you suddenly go viral. You have to use social media also. It's not sure. You 
looks like its name is suggesting it's slides rather than video content. Yeah. It's slides. But it goes out videos. Yeah, if you want to make it advanced, yeah. But it's more about... It even gives me right here, oh, I'm looking at, at a particular slide presentation, and I click the Share button, and it says, here's your WordPress code. Great. Give me that code, and I'll put it right into WordPress. Yeah. So now that blog post... I think if I publish it, I think because it's code, I should paste it in the code. And do they have a time limitation to add per presentation? Do they give you a cap on how long it should be? For that, I'd have to look it up. I haven't. Uh, so I have to look at it to see about. Um, what about a quote right there? See let me finish answering her question first. Uh, I don't believe I've um, I've looked into it enough to see if there's a limitation. I don't think there is. This code here means something else, uh, probably, but we'll see. In any event, this works. It's just that obviously. Um, for the moment it decided not to, but it works. I have other ways to get that, probably the embed. Maybe it's my, maybe it's my theme. No, uh, there it is. What I needed to do was I needed to copy the code that it gave me and paste it into the code. It's not obvious, but the visual is the one with the pretty buttons, and then text is the code. So it was giving me code. I should have pasted it into code, and then now it worked. So you use the embed, right? On this case, I used the, yeah, I used the, the other the option. The embed. Yeah, the WordPress shortcode didn't seem to work, but I got the embed, and then that gives me what I want. There's my slideshow presentation in my blog post. It's real. I can go next slide, next slides, next slide. And I'm not taking up any space on my server. I'm borrowing someone else's slide. So what about for the SEO? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for SEO, you still have to take the time when you upload your slide to SlideShare to put in a good description, title, and if it's got keywords and such. So I, I think the search engines are better of understanding what's in your PowerPoint because usually it's text. But you still want to use the, the SEO fields of the network to explain what it is so that the search engines can find it. Yes? That's a that's a big answer because some uh, some providers or some profiles might love that because actually you're giving them traffic as well. So right here, uh, Marinash might love that. Oh, more people are checking out my my PowerPoint again. Others might not. They might think, oh, you're stealing my work, especially if you don't give any credit back to the original. It seems here that on SlideShare it automatically gave the credit back to the originator. So if you don't have a, the credit to who created it, that might be bad. It's really going to depend on who you're borrowing the work from. Um, that could be the biggest negative. The second negative, again, it's much better to have your own original content. The search engines will give you more precedence and preference that way, because if your competitors are the one that's making the original content and you're just repurposing content, your competitor is going to get the preference of a higher ranking. 
And as a beginner, like, yeah, I don't have the time to make a new PowerPoint every month or a video and such. And that's a very uh, real concern, but it really does behoove us to make our own original content. Are these sources public? Um, or is there an option for people who don't want to use their staff to take it? Here, Definitely on YouTube. There, you remember you can have it private or unlisted, and you can turn off the sharing ability. I haven't logged in very recently to power uh, to slide share, so I don't know the full details, but I don't doubt it that it also has that. Uh, no embed code uh, or no sharing. I'm sure that there's those for all the networks. Uh, you can assume that pretty much. Sometimes not, because sometimes people might forget to turn it off, and then yeah, but who knows? Yeah, it's almost if you're going to be public on a social network, there you shouldn't really have a big problem with your work being shared. Now, obviously, that's great for you because you're borrowing other people's work. But conversely, when you start to put your own original content, will you feel okay with people repurposing your work? So it goes both ways. Yeah, because if it got, if it has the original embed code like this, this is clearly has a link back to the originator. I can edit the code and strip that name out, but then maybe now I'm running a foul of things. So yeah, they will they will know because the link will go back to a site that, that is different if it's not your site. Question. I was just gonna say that um, you Slideshare.net was purchased by LinkedIn, and then there's this other website called Linda, L Y N D A, uh -huh. which is also by them. Mm -hmm. And that's video. Uh, I'm not sure if, um, Linda.com is a completely different thing because really they are in it to make money. Yeah. Linda.com is there to sell you subscriptions to buy lessons on a variety of things. Mm -hmm. They are going to give a couple of free videos here and there, mm -hmm. but they're not going to give the whole 20 part lesson. So there's a lot that we can consider about about blog posts, but let's say you wrote something, go ahead and update it. We'll take a break and when we come back we'll talk more WordPress. It's 2.30, let's come back at 2.40.